We've been talking about discipleship and the importance of sharing Jesus with someone. What does your faith mean? Is it something that is private and personal? That's a lie from hell. Your faith is not private and it's not personal. It's personal, but it's not private. Because you can't be an undercover Christian. Because you are supposed to shout it from the rooftops. Are you willing to shout it from the rooftops? That's the challenge that we've got. I've asked Pierre if he would just share with us a bit of a testimony about what's happening on the discipleship side. Praise the Lord. Now, I just want to share a testimony of something that happened recently. Is uh, My uh, granddaughter had to go for a license application to go and to go and write the application so uh, you go there down in um, to the to the test station and then you go and do a booking and somebody needs to wait outside and it takes about an hour so I was parking there uh, waiting for her and I was doing reverse parking and I saw in front of me there's a tree but under this tree is a business going there are some people who are taking photographs, they've got a printer there, they've got a couple of guys there that does, um, that directs you to parking places, they're parking attendants, and then there are also guys whom you can go to if you want to be trained to get your K53 uh, training for, for the license and so on. And while I was sitting in the car, I thought by myself, why am I sitting in the car where I'm going to sit here for an hour and there's this going on all around me. So I saw a couple of stones there under the shade of this tree and I thought, let me go and sit there. And I sat there amongst the people and I started talking to them. Who has done the conversations course? Amen. There you are. I, did, I started the conversation course. You know, I started asking questions and these kind of things and the next moment I had the opportunity to share the gospel with these guys there was three guys who prayed with me um, I had luckily I had five Bibles in the car I could go and give five Bibles to them and um, the next day I had to go back to give another two of the guys who asked me to give it so what am I saying is it is so easy the opportunities are there. We must make use of the opportunities. Now, those people can't go to church. They some stay in, um, I mean this church. Some stay in Cosmo City, others stay in Soweto, others stay on the other side of Randburg. So it's difficult. But there is now a cell group opportunity. Somebody can now volunteer to have a cell group under that tree on a specific day of the week during at their workplace. That's how easy it is. Now I know when some of us hear that, it's like we're going to <laughs> I must go and speak to somebody. Okay. So I want you to look at the person on your left hand side. And I want you to look at the person on the right hand side. And I want you to recognize that it starts there. You see, the challenge that we've got with all of this stuff is somewhere in this, we don't know who we are in this whole process. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about understanding what it means to be me. Me being me. And the big challenge it is about being a disciple. Are you a disciple? You cannot be a disciple if you don't disciple. You see, a disciple will disciple. You cannot be a disciple. You cannot be a disciple and it stops here. A disciple is somebody who allows God 
the Holy Spirit to work in you, through you, for Him. So the process of that, the process of understanding that God is working with you. Some of you can do things quite olik, meh. Some of you have got a few things you can do that is quite smart. Some of you are good at certain things. Somebody. Some of you are good at something. I thought there was no gifting in this place. God has given us abilities. And we have abilities, and we have to make sure that we hone those abilities, that we become better at what has been given to us, and that we do that for God because He gave it to us. Amen? Do you believe that? Okay, now there's a word for that. It's called, it's called stewardship. You see, stewardship is the management, management. It's the management of the things that has been given to you, that you take care of, and you do, and you look after for His glory. You see, nothing you have is about you. Everything you have is about Him. So if we start this, every one of us, and I've listened to people, this is the new year, are you ready? There's going to be so much more faithfulness. God is going to do something in our lives. Hallelujah, are you ready for that? Next. What, what, what is that? Whatever that is, it's your that. And you have to ask God what that is. But I want you to understand where it starts. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. Guys, this is so important for each and every one of us to understand that discipleship starts with each one of us personally, but discipleship and stewardship cannot be separated. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. How many of us feel anxious every now and again? And the things we feel anxious about are things that will never happen. Amen? Not so positive about that one, eh? You see, the anxiety we are feeling and the anxiety that is used against us is what the devil wants to stomp on our head with. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You see, when the devil tap dances on your head, you're so busy going blah, 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 that you forget that you've got a sound mind. So I have to be faithful in my relationship with God and I come to Him, and the first thing I do about my relationship with God, this is where I start. Search me, God. Search my heart. Check me out. Point out anything in me that offends you. We've got to be serious about our relationship with God. This is not something that you do half-heartedly. You see, discipleship starts with you and God. You see, I can't go and help others if I'm not focusing on God with all my life. There are so many challenges that we find. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Now, this scripture was very challenging for me. Where I come from, the life that I led, up until the point where God saved me out of my quagmire, the life I led, things that were normal for me, offends God. 
I'm going to say that again. The things that were normal for me in my life are offensive to God. This was okay. It didn't bug me. It's whatever. But that offends God. So do I have a relationship with God? And if I have a relationship with God, am I making sure that the things that I expose myself to, the things that I am busy with, the things I do, are they offensive to God? You see, when we start with this, we have to understand, am I ready to give it all to God? You see, we can cheer about discipleship. We can cheer about the song that we sing, my house is built on Jesus. We can cheer about that. But if we do not let go and let God, if I'm not willing to surrender everything to him, all I am is a fan. Remember I spoke to you the difference about a fan, a follower, and going into discipleship? You see, a fan does things on their terms. They follow on their terms. I'm a Christian the way I like to be a Christian. I took my mom to hospital and she was having some questions that they were asking her. And then the lady who was asking the questions said, you don't have to answer these questions, but we have to ask them. And they started asking all these funny questions about what gender do you identify with? My mom's 85, turning 86. What gender does she identify with? At 86, <laughs> woman. So there's so many things that we can just say, yeah, but it's okay, that's the world is. Don't worry about it, just brush it off. It's not a, no. What does God's word say? God's word says, I know who I am. I am a man. I am a child of God. And then they ask you, what religion are you? And there was a lady in front of us and she said, I'm a Presbyterian. And the lady said, how do you spell that? But anyway. <laughs> I'm not a Presbyterian. And guys, I want to say to you today, I'm not a Christian. I don't want to be a Christian. You see, Christianity in today's world has become a religion. And I can tell you now, I do not want to live my life based on a religion. I live my life based on a relationship with God. And that relationship means that I must surrender all to him. You know, we, we did a, a, a year where we were talking, they actually uh, went over two years, where we were talking about blessed to be a blessing. God blesses us to bless others. Now, I don't want to get into that too much. I'm going to come back to it. But I need to, I need to recognize what that means in my life. Christians go to church because they want to be blessed. I know I'm on sticky ground here. A child of God goes to church so he can honor and worship God. There's a difference. We need to understand, are you children of God? Are you children of God? If you're not, come and share with me. I will pray with you. We'll sort out whatever the devil wants to do in your life. You are going to heaven. Yes. Amen. Amen. We are children of the Most High God, the creator of the universe. He is the beginning and the end. He is the author and the finisher of my story. Hallelujah. Amen. That is my God. That is is who I surrender my life to. And that's why I'm a child of God. 
That's why I know I'm blessed. You see, because I'm going to spend an eternity in heaven. This time now is only 80 years, man. <laughs> Not a reaction from 80 years. Eight, 80 years. Eternity! 80 years? Eternity. <laughs> So whatever happens now, even if it's rough, I'm blessed. It doesn't matter how challenging it is, I'm blessed. But we have been taught that Lord bless me and bless me indeed. We've been taught that that's what we must pray. Lord bless me and bless me indeed. And by the way, I want that blessing now. Because I've got a lot I want to do. And I can only do it if you bless me. You see, when we get to that place, we want God to bless us so that we can do. But what has God already done? If I look at my life and where God took me from, and what God's done with me, what God's done with us, our family, I am so blessed. I'm blessed out of my socks. Do I face some challenges? Yes. Have I got some problems with the projects that we're facing? Yes. Do I want to kick somebody sometimes? Yes. <laughs> but I'm blessed. I am already blessed. I don't have to cry that God will bless me. What I need to do is I need to get in line with what God wants, so that the blessing He is pouring into my life can flow through my life. That blessing is already there. But we as children of, as Christians, we over here and we're saying, Lord, bless me. Lord, I want to do work for you. Give me the lotto numbers, Lord, and I will pay 10% into the church immediately. You see, we want God to do something so that I can. But a child of God knows what's in his hands now. You see, you are already gifted. You are already blessed with something. And you must be a steward of that something. Don't ask God to bring the blessing here. You must move into the blessing that he has for you, and that's relationship. You see, yeah, it's about gimme, 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 gimme. So it's not relationship. But yeah, it's Lord, thank you for what you've done, and I'm doing because of, for, because of what you've done. And we have to understand how important this is. Lord, bless me and bless me now. All of us want increase in our lives. All of us want promotion. All of us want to move forward or up the ladder or we want more. So what are we doing to align ourselves in God's plan so that the more that he wants to pour out, pours out through you? You see, if God's pouring it out here, and I'm over here, all I can do is watch what other people are doing and getting, and it's not fair. But you are disobedient. you standing here. Repent, stop it, and get in line with where God wants you to be. And it really starts with what you are and who you are now. There's so many people that come to me and say, I don't know what God wants me to do. So I'm waiting. Whenever I hear that, I have a picture in my mind. I, I won't tell you the whole context of the story. There's a skeleton sitting on a chair. The skeleton. And a sign above him says, I'm waiting. Have you become a skeleton? 
Are you dead, dry bones waiting? Yeah, there, there's been a time that God spoke, the dry bones, they came to life. But that life is now with us through Jesus Christ. It is here. Life is here now. Are you going to want life or are you going to embrace the life that is already yours? You see, I've got to get, un I've got to understand that if God is going to do so much through me, I've got to start somewhere. Everything that you want God to do in your life starts with stewardship. Okay, so when we hear stewardship, we normally think about money. Okay, most people teach stewardship has got something to do with money. Money is included in, included in stewardship. But stewardship is about managing the resources that God has given you. That's not just money. Say amen. amen. My goodness. Sure. Luke 16 from verse 10. Now I want you to understand that what I'm sharing with you now is based on that. It's based on stewardship. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Verse 11, and if you are untrustworthy, about worldly wealth or worldly things, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with the things of your own? You see, we want God to give us so that I can prosper, not understanding that God's prosperity works, you prosper so that others prosper. The, the easy to read version, I love going back to this one. Also Luke 16, whoever can be trusted with small things can also be trusted with big things. Whoever is dishonest in little things will be dishonest in big things too. If you cannot be trusted with worldly riches, you will not be trusted with the true riches. And if you cannot be tr trusted with the things that belong to someone else, you will not be given anything of your own. So the first time you are tested, you are put in a position to look after somebody else's stuff. The first opportunity you have for growth is you have to look after somebody else's stuff. Do you know that you do that every day? How many of you go to work somewhere? Guess what? You're looking after somebody else's stuff. Somebody's asked you to do something. Somebody has given you a job to do. Somebody has given you a role that you must fulfill. Somebody has given you something. That is stewardship. Now somebody has entrusted you to look after something, a project, whatever it is. Are you giving your best to that? Are you doing your best? Are you giving everything to God first so that when you do this work, God is glorified? Do people know that you are a child of God at work? Or is that not something we discuss? I promise you everybody knows that I'm a child of God. And I work, often I work amongst Philistines. And that's okay, God loves Philistines. God loves everyone. God sent Jesus to die for everyone. That all will be saved. The problem is not everybody responds. And if you don't respond to God's call, that's a challenge. 
You see, when Jesus is talking about the things that are given to you, Jesus is asking you, I'm giving you something. Are you taking care of it? The gift you've been given, the things you can do well, those things God has given you so that you will use that in his kingdom. That gift that you got, it's, it's not some supernatural crazy gift. What can you do and what are you good at? And that which you can do and what you are good at, God has given you that ability. And are you doing that so that he gets the glory? Does everybody know how fantastic you are? Or does everybody know that that which you are doing is because God empowered you to do it? Did you get what I'm saying? You see, we have to understand that it's not about me. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. Genesis 12 verse 2. God speaking to Abraham. I will make you great. I will do all of this with you. And I'm doing it to you so that you will be a blessing to others guys that's the foundation of discipleship you see because the person you're looking at could be going to hell and you must have compassion on the person there because they are going to are you telling them about the fact that they don't have to go to hell are they going to be in the future are they going to be on the other side shouting back at you why didn't you tell me I didn't know you do know so tell them so that they know so that everyone that you are coming to uh, encounter with has no excuse I shared with you a couple of weeks ago Renette it was the most amazing thing how she just challenged her whole family just told them they're going to hell I was quite amused <laughs> I haven't seen Renette go like this and then her sister jumped on the bandwagon as well yeah you're gonna help too <laughs> for those who don't understand it's yes you're also going to help so the two of them ganged up against their family and by the time they were finished they were just in tears I had to counsel the whole family no I'm only kidding But what she said and what her sister said was true. And it did shake up a few people that were, because the whole family had got together. There was, they, they, like six brothers and sisters, there's a whole bunch of them. If you can't tell your family about the good news, how are you going to tell anybody else? You, you see, it actually starts with you. Are you living the good news? Are you doing it in your home? Are you being a good steward of the message that God has given you? Are you looking after that? Because the message is go and make disciples. Now, go isn't always the way Piet goes. Piet can go like most other people can't go. Pete just walks in anyway. He's just one of those guys that just walks in anyway. Some of us are not like that. We will gently come and speak to somebody. Gently make sure that they're stuck on the airplane with you next to you so they can't go anyway. Do you think you're a good person? <laughs> That's a discussion for another time. So we have to understand there's different ways. And what he was sharing with you earlier about conversations. Conversations is one of the most amazing tools. It doesn't even have to be with foreign, foreigners or people you don't know. It can be with somebody that you do know that you engage in a conversation with them just talking about what God's done for you. You see, when you testify to God's goodness, there's nothing that is more powerful than a testimony of God's goodness. 
How many of you have experienced the goodness of God? Amen? Okay, how many of you experienced the goodness of God this year? How many of you have experienced the goodness of God today? You see, we've got to look for it. You've got to see it. If you don't look for God's hand, you're going to be deaf, dumb, and stupid. But we're not, because we have wisdom. And the Holy Spirit makes us wise. And that wisdom is, thank you for life in me, so I can share life with someone else. It's not how clever I am, it's what Jesus did for you and for me. When I can hold on to that, what and how do I treat what God has already given me? I want you to ask yourself this question seriously. How do I look after what God has already given me? The things I can do, the gifts I have. How do I take care of them? Do I just bury them? Or do I use them for God's glory? Do I look after it so that it becomes more? Do I take care? Matthew 13, verse 12. Excellence is not having the best of everything. Excellence is doing the best with everything. I'm going to say that to you again before I read the scripture. Excellence is not having the best of everything. Excellence is doing the best with everything. Matthew 13, verse 12. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, you are all listening, eh? Remember, liars go to hell, eh? Are you listening? Oh. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. That is why I use these parables, Jesus speaking. For they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. You see, you can study for years and years and years and years and just have knowledge. God is not interested in you having knowledge of the Bible. God is interested in you having a relationship with him who wrote the word. Amen? Because when I have that relationship, when I read, I do not have knowledge. I have revelation. God enlightens things. He shows me more. And when that happens, because of relationship, there's transformation. I cannot be the same as what I was before. But a person who's just got knowledge, they can do a professorship and only have knowledge, but never have true revelation. Never understand God's word. When we see this, I want to refer to the parable of the ten servants, Luke 19, verse 26. The king comes back from doing his thing, and he's left ten servants in charge of stuff. Yes, the king replied, to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. Are you hearing what I'm saying? To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. But for the, from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now some people, and I've heard some teachings, where people make this very, very out there spiritual and they, guys, this is basic stuff. This is very, very clear about who you are as a child of God. This is not some fancy thing out there. If God has given you responsibility in something, God tells you, 
through his word how I must, I'm a child of God, I now learn how I must act as a husband towards Renette. I'm learning, I'm reading, I am given, so now I know I must do. As the new husband transformed from the old to the new. I learn all of this and I don't do. Then that which I thought I had will be taken away from me. The relationship that we have will fall apart. That which I thought I could be, I will not be it. But if I take what God has shown me and I see where I can apply it in my life, the principles of God's word is application in every aspect of my life. And once I am applying these things, one aspect of application is telling someone else about God. The application, God has given me this, so I'm sharing this with you. God called me, and I promise you I was a hooligan. God called me, and I'm standing in front of you. I cannot stand in front of you without God. I cannot. It's impossible. I do not have the ability to stand in front of you and share what I'm sharing with you. But he empowered me to do this. He empowered me to actually do the studies I do. For those of you who do not know me, I'm dyslexic. The only book that I can read fluently is the Bible. Everything I've studied, I've had to study mostly with audiobooks. Renette is one of the most qualified, undocumented people that you can find. When I say that, she is documented for South Africa, don't worry about it. When I studied, there was many times when I said to her, what's this? Come and tell me this. And she would read the stuff I was reading to help me understand what was going on. Most of the stuff I listened, I found recordings on things like this. You see, God blessed me so that I would stand in front of you and teach you. If God blessed me and did all of this for me, and I went home, said, thank you, Jesus. That which I have would be taken away from me. I'm going to give you a very practical example. Many years ago, many years ago, sure, even before some of you were born, <laughs> I was teaching and I was working and I was learning amongst a school where they were working with deaf people. So part of the work I was doing was counseling with the family. But in working in this environment, I learned some of the sign language. I was in that environment for more or less a year. And when I came out of that environment, it changed completely. I never ever spoke to deaf people again. I cannot use any of the language I learned then. It's not here anymore. I don't have it. You see, if you don't use it, you lose it. Say that again. If you don't use it, you... So what gift have you been given and you're not using it? Ha, 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 ha. 2 Corinthians 9, from verse 6. I want you to understand this. Look at me. Everything you have, everything is his. Nothing is yours. The food you eat is his. The bed you're sleeping is his. The blankets you sleep under is his. The clothes we wear is his. Everything belongs to him. Because he's the source of everything. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. So the moment we hear that, we talk about money. God has planted seed in you. What are you doing about it? You see, we want God to bless us. Lord, bless me. Give me a forest. 
and the Lord gives you a sack of seed. No, 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 no. I don't want to go through the process of seed to forest. Just give me a forest. You see, God wants to see what you're going to do with the seed so that he can see what you're going to do with the forest. He's not just going to give you a forest because he doesn't know what you're going to do with it. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. I've been saying that to you all along. Remember when we talk about giving, everything I say to you is about what is God telling you. I've never put anybody under condemnation about giving in this church. Uh, amen? Just someone? Thank you, Lord. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Now, when we say that, everybody grabs their wallets and their soccer and the, the ladies put their handbag under their arm. It's got nothing to do with your money. It's got everything to do with your heart. Because if you give your heart to God, you will know that your money belongs to him anyway. And I don't have to worry about you giving. I worry about God taking care of me. And he does. He always has. And that's why you don't see a plate. I've got leadership telling me we must take up off. Now I've even got a suggestion. Once a month, we must send an offering plate around. Because people must give. There's a box on the wall there. Jesus gave us an example. There was an offering box in the temple. And he watched the people, the fancy pants who gave so that everybody could see them giving, and the people that gave what they had. The issue is, are you giving from your heart? And it's not about money. It's about you. Because if you give money and it's not your heart, it's worth nothing. It doesn't do anything. It's not for the kingdom. The kingdom is about the gifts that you have, that you are using to help the person next to you. You know, maybe somebody next to you just wants an ear to hear, just to talk to. That's a gift. And if your heart is in it, if you're doing it, it's not like, I suppose I better do something. You know? Then your heart's not in it then God doesn't want you to do it. Okay, so we're going to have prayer meetings on a Wednesday. Oh, better go to the prayer meeting. Just watch out for the lightning along the way. If you come into a prayer meeting because I said you must come to a prayer meeting, hold for bay. That means carry on going. You come to a prayer meeting because in your heart, you want to spend time in prayer with people communally to honor and worship God. When we ask people about doing things, Renee sent out a few SMS, WhatsApps, not SMSs, WhatsApp. When this WhatsApp thing started, <laughs> WhatsApp, why? What's wrong with it? No, I sent you a WhatsApp. What do you mean, what's up? I'm fine. It's nothing. I had to get used to this whole what's up thing. Because everything was SMSs first. See, I'm born in the time that we didn't have TV. We used to listen to the radio. Squad cars on a Friday night. During the week, I would listen to Jet Jungle. And then we had the creaking door. You'd be sitting there and it's all about that. Beware of the creaking door. And everybody looked at them. Fear and trepidation. And God will generously provide all you need then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to 
share with others. You see, you must decide in your own heart how much to give. Don't give reluctant, reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. What is this about? And God will supply. He will provide. You see, if you don't mind giving, then God's going to give you so that you can give. But if you give like, I'm, I'm giving, but I, I'm, 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 gi I'm, I'm giving, you can ha have this. You see, if you give, then God will give you another one so that you can give. And you can get another one so you can give. And, and guys, please understand, this is all of you. It's what you are. It's about you being you in God's kingdom. Yeah, but I'm a person that God knows your heart. He knows your nonsense. You can't hide anything from God. There's nothing that you can hide from him. He knows you, pimples and all. You can put the makeup on. He still sees it. And he still loves you. And he still wants you to surrender, let go, and be used by him in his kingdom for his glory. Amen. And it starts with the person next to you. What are you doing to help the person next to you? What are you doing to encourage the person next to you? What are you doing just to say, how's it to somebody? On a Sunday, having a cup of coffee with somebody. On a Sunday, serving. Remember with that thing that I played last week where the guy actually didn't even want to be in church and he started pouring coffee for people and God allowed him to fall in love with the people. Eventually, he fell in love with the church because he was serving. So, as my wife is sharing here, she sent a WhatsApp to all of you. And one person responded, in our pain. But everything belongs to God. You see, you can serve or you don't serve. And we're asking you to help us serve here. Because we want to serve the people in the fellowship. We want to serve you, and you, and you, and you. But I can't do all of that. So we need each other to serve with each other. Because we are the family of God. And when I get to know you, then I know what your problem is. In this week, somebody who is part of our church and somebody who works quite closely with us had gone through a difficult time and we didn't even know the person hadn't spoken to us. But every time you looked at this person, they, they, they were just not nice. Where I come from, when somebody had a long face, you know when, they, when, when somebody's got, their lips are 10 bar. You know, you know, you see our kids when they're upset. They... Now you also do that. You just don't make it so real. You just. So this lady was walking around with 10 bar. And eventually we said, please come and talk to us. What's going on? And as soon as we understood, we could help. There's somebody next to you in front of you, behind you, that just needs a bit of help. And maybe God wants to use you as a disciple to help them. And guys, it's wonderful and we are pushing for it. We're going to do work out there. But it starts with discipling each other. Yeah! Right here. Yeah. God bless me. Thank you for the seed that you're giving me. I will look after the seed so we will have a forest. And in the forest, there will be a whole bunch of stuff. 
Maybe God's giving you a seed for all an orchard. I'm going to sell all those apples and I'm going to make... No, you're not. You're going to sell some of the apples. And some of the apples you're going to replant. And some of the apples you're going to share. And some of the apples we're going to have apple juice with. We've got to understand how God works. He's empowered you so that you can help others. 1 Corinthians 12, from verse 6. God works in different ways. But it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. Whatever your gifting is, it's about helping the person around you. We must understand that we are the body of Christ. And I want to bring this to a close with just another two scriptures I want to share with you. James 4 verse 2. You want what you don't have. So you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have. But you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. You see, if you want for me, then you're not going to have for me. Because it's not about me. It's about us. And whatever God blesses me for, with, whatever he blesses me, yes, he gives me enough for me and to share. Say amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So I must take care of what God gives me so that I look after myself and then I have. So if God gives you a little, then you manage a little so that you can share a little. Then God will give you more so that you can manage more and you can help more. But if you don't look after a little, you're not getting more. And the little starts with what can you do? Who can help us in the kitchen? Who can help us with the sound? We need people to help us with the sound. Who can help us in the Sunday school? We've got some amazing responses. Thank you for all the people that have responded for the Sunday school. There are so many areas. People are, how, we need people to greet. We need this, this coffee thing, this conversation thing. Must happen. We must make it happen. We're going to cordon off. We suddenly had too many people and we didn't, no, 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 don't worry about it. We're going to have our coffee up. But now, you don't want to walk from here to there. I'm going home. Sorry. Don't go home. Have coffee. Have a conversation. We're going to set it up, we're going to coordinate off, we're going to put all that kind of stuff there. Come and work with me. Even when you ask, you don't get it because your motive is wrong. I don't want to fight with you. So I'm going to leave it to God. <laughs> I'm praying for you. But God will get you if you lie. Watch it. You know, there's a thing that Renette was sharing with me. If you say you will and you don't, you're a liar. And liars go to? And if somebody asks you for something and you don't answer, you are lying. Because you didn't answer You didn't respond. That's a lie. Because you knew you must. No, I didn't. that's a lie. You did. 
You ran away from it. <laughs> Don't worry, I also run away from phone calls sometimes. I heard the story of this woman. She was, this person was phoning and she didn't want to answer the phone. So she went and she jumped in the bath and she told her uh, daughter, answer the phone, tell the person I'm in the bath. She was fully clothed. There was no water in the bath. She went and jumped in the bath. She was in the bath. Wow! Are you going to live a life of being lukewarm? You're either hot or cold. You're either in or you're out. There's no half. And I'm going to again tell you that. You can't be half pregnant. You either are or you aren't. You're either a child of God or you're not. You're either in relationship with God or you're in religion. There's no... Are we lukewarm or we're on fire for God? Romans 12 verse 4. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function. You have a special function. None of this, I'm not good enough and I can't and I was created. God created you a masterpiece. If you need some counseling, we'll talk about it, but I'm closing off now, so we're not going to go into that now. So it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body. And we all belong to each other. You belong to me and I belong to you. What's that song? Um, it's, I belong to you. Okay. Amen, whatever. So it's got something to do with belonging. We belong to him and we belong to each other because you belong to him and I belong to him, so we belong to each other. We are sisters and brothers. In South African context, you can always say, hello, cousin. But we are sisters and brothers in Christ. Amen? So how do we help each other? And I really want to, I want to, I want to encourage you. There's no one that is not good enough in God's hands. No one. The devil wants to tell you you can't. Well, I'm telling you you can because of Jesus. He empowers us to be able. So I've got to make a list of the things I can do. What am I good at? Sometimes we even talk about administration. Some people are good at administration. Some people are good at prayer. I don't want to do a whole bunch of other stuff. I want to pray. Okay. When we pray, when we're going to do the other stuff, come and pray. Oh, I don't know if I've got time for that. Then you're not a good steward of that which you have. You see, you and I must be good stewards. God has given, we have received. Be a steward of what God has given you so that your life is a living testimony to God. Everything I do must give him the glory. Amen. Are we in agreement? I'm going to bug you next week with this again. You're not getting away with it. And next week, you are going to come and tell the church, not, not the body, you're going to put it on, what are you going to do to help each other? Are you going to help in the front? Are you going to help with the guests? Are you going to help with coffee? Are you going to help with the kitchen? Are you going to help with sound? Are you going to help with prayer? Are you going to help with conversations? Are you going to help with the praise and worship team? Are you going to help with what? Don't say nothing. Because somebody has got to do something because otherwise nothing will be done by somebody and then Praise the Lord. Are you going to be good stewards? This year is about being disciples and stewards of what God has given us. You've got a friend who doesn't need to go to hell. You've got a relative. You've got somebody who you know that doesn't need 
to go to hell. This year, I'm asking you to get one person to make that decision for Jesus and to walk with you as you walk with them. That's why this year we are saying, come and follow me as I follow Jesus. It's not about following me. I don't want you to follow me. Follow me as I follow Jesus. The question is, can I say to somebody else, follow me as I follow Jesus? Or is it just, no, 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 follow what the Bible says. Don't do what I do. No, you are the example. That's discipleship. You are the example to the other person. That is discipleship. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this opportunity of learning, speaking, sharing, and hearing your word. Thank you, Lord, that you are busy with each and every one of us. And I pray this, Lord. Holy Spirit, unction us. Make us feel hot under the collar. Make us bug us, Holy Spirit, so that we will not just sit down and do nothing, but we will understand what is my part as me. God has blessed me. I am me in this world. I am me in this fellowship. God has blessed me to be me, so I must use what I have as me for the kingdom, for the family. And as I do that, I am honoring God with the gifts he has given me. Thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us all already. Help us to be good stewards of what you have blessed us with. And let us see and let us be excited about what you are bringing to flourishing in this ministry. And we give you honor for that in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen.